A loaded truck comes to a screeching stop in front of an apartment. When a lady Lily Succumbus gets off thinking she's alone and revealing a bottle of tequila from under her jacket to take what she calls a quick break. There are boxes labeled with stuff as if someone's shifting along with a bunch of boxes of smoke candy. A candy that produces smoke but is damaging to health. As Lily gulps down the bottle as if it's water, a conical-eared devil, Adam, snatches the bottle from her hands asking her to slow down on her addiction only for her to make excuses of it being present in one of the boxes and not belonging to her. Adam, obviously, calls out her lie so she makes an excuse of finding such things in the stuff of a college student. Lily decided to open one of the boxes to make her lie believable only to find cat stuff in it. She turns to the owner of the boxes, Skelly, the skeleton and questions if he's getting a cat only to hear an affirmative response that makes her try to convince the cool skeleton to reconsider. But Skelly is unbothered and enjoying his smoke candy wanting to have a company since he's moving out for the first time. Besides, the order is due anytime so there's no space for reconsideration left. Skelly asks her not to tell Adam to avoid his elderly lectures only for Adam to overhear it while drinking Willie's holy drink. Hence, while Adam nags Skelly for adopting a cat from human world, Lily nags Adam for having the audacity to drink her tequila. She starts giving death threats to Adam who's processing Skelly's decision to start dramatically pray for both of his weird friends, not realizing how weird he is being at the moment. Lily looks around Skelly's place noticing how the apartment can flood if it rains. But she jumps and dashes when she witnesses a snake there dropping all her crackers and disturbing the two serious people discussing how Skelly used up all his savings to buy the apartment. She jumps on Skelly's back forgetting he is all bones and cannot absorb the force as much as them. She rants about the snake and calls it the reason for the place being inexpensive but it's reassuring for them that Skelly doesn't have any mass to be bitten to. Adam wanders around and only comes up with the empty packet of her formerly spilled crackers calling her drunk for seeing things. Acting all fatherly, he again tells Lily to stop drinking and Skelly to stop eating that smoke candy but since Skelly does not have a throat it doesn't matter to him so he nonchalantly blows a puff of candy smoke on his concerned friend. The trio then focuses on finishing the unpacking. The Deviledom is a realm where the devils are not allowed to travel to other realms with yet permission SK they only have story and books about other realms but there's a lot of information missing for them. They are, however, allowed trade of legally permitted animals and plants through registered agencies. Hence, the devils can have pets from human world and Skelly ordered one too. They even share common food with human world but there still lacks information about how exactly the humans look and it has always been omitted by the state from the books. No demon knows what a human exactly looks like and they are told off as dangerous creatures to devils. Even Skelly is a devil intrigued on learning more about human world which is why he keeps exploring the new books and editions that talk about humans only to be disappointed by the censored information. Slamming the book, Skelly enjoys his smoke candy analyzing how the apartment he bought is the size of the bathroom of his previous house, but he is still chill since he's gonna live alone and can manage with less money as well. As he munches on his smoke candy, the box of his sleeping cat rustles alerting him about his new pet being awake. Skelly is finally ready to see the cat he bought but as he opens the box, he's left confused at the sight of something that's not a cat. The bored skeleton has received a human baby as his pet. Skelly is dumbfounded by the sight in front of him. He pokes the baby's skin and touches its hair finding them different from how they've known for a cat especially the little fingers of the baby's hands. He wonders who this bizarre looking creature is since he's seen pictures of all the animals from the human world. He calls the human resource services only to hear the number being out of service. He then notices the website no longer existing as well. Skelly is without a doubt sure that he's indeed been scammed. As Skelly tries to contain his anger at being scammed, the baby wakes up with snot all over its face and looks cutely at Skelly. Skelly is a bit charmed by the creature and waves at it but as the baby's sight settles to what's in front, it finds Skelly scary enough to scream and cry so loud that pigeons outside tremble and fly away scared. Skelly panics and holds the baby trying to calm it down telling him. Hell have a problem with the neighbors with that amount of noise while he tries to control his frustration over the scam he just got into but noticing the trembling baby who's about to cry louder. He realizes it obviously won't understand what Skelly has been saying so he tries to apologize and shush it. He politely puts the now calm baby in the box to get something sweet to calm his nerves. As he's eating his smoke candy, he contemplates calling others for help. He then notices the baby's cute stare and wonders if he should give it the smoke candy but obviously decides otherwise given the harm it can do to its throat. He tosses the box of his sweet smoke to a side and owls out the picture of the cat he was supposed to receive. Upon not being able to match the features with the baby, 
He pulls out different pictures of cats and other animals from human world but can't relate it to any of them completely. He looks at the unbothered baby, who's sucking its toe, and wonders what its life form is if not any animal. He then finally pulls out the illustration of the only animal whose pictures are revealed to them. He compares the baby's features and characteristics to the ones mentioned about humans and after taking everything into consideration, he is almost certain that he has indeed been brought in front of a human. He sits down looking at the innocent unaware baby as he recalls the Article 3 of the Devil that states to execute any human right at the spot when witnessed it. As Skelly picks the baby contemplating on what to do with it considering it's a human, a news on the TV diverts him. A geographic-like channel has two devils talk about a mutant bird that has very less feathers. The lower half of its body is completely featherless. As a professor discusses the mutant bird, Charlie, Skelly analyzes the situation on TV while holding the baby and poor Charlie is rejected by a female bird. As the professors conclude their show with remarks on the harsh reality on Animal King, where a mutant is completely rejected and not considered of its own species even though it's innocent. Skelly feels emotional as only death awaits the poor bird and then he considers a possibility that the baby is a mutant featherless cat. Feeling bad about the poor cat, he decides to create a comfortable environment in a box as for cats and keep it since he knows a cat's lifetime is 15 years and in devildom, 15 years pass by a blink so it won't be an issue for him. He is almost sure it's a cat and not a human that lives for about 80 to 100 years according to his book about human world. He regrets not thinking his decision through and hastily buying a cat since the chubby specie in front of him definitely seems to be someone with a large appetite while poor. Skelly practically ran away from home and does not have enough money with him. Skelly puts the baby in the box and decides to go to sleep but his tiring day does not seem to be over at all as JNC the baby begs to be held but as a devil, Skelly is very strict to his rules of not treating pets as equals to them so he refuses to hold the baby and take it to bed. Skelly adamantly switches the light off wanting to sleep but as soon as the room black out, the baby starts wailing so bad that all the neighbors surround Skelly's door in an instant wanting him to quiet his pet down and let them sleep. As they all shout at the door to quiet him, Skelly begs the baby to quiet down still refusing to hold it but convincing a baby is the hardest job in the world. The series of lights switching off and the crying switching on goes the whole night while Skelly begs his hairless cat to quiet down knowing once he holds it, there's no way his cat would not want it every day. Not being able to do anything, at last Skelly reluctantly holds the box on himself while lying down on his back not getting even a tad bit of sleep the whole night. The baby, however, lies fully comfortable on the pillow in the box sleeping after his successful battle with the devil leaving the poor scary devil wondering how he's gonna take care of his new weird pet. In the church of the demon god, some devils run towards their river and reminding him of his promise to teach them more about the Bible after their service. It turns out that Adam devoted himself as a priest to this religion, and it's him that all these devils were talking to. He apologizes to all of them for forgetting about it and promises to keep the next weekend open for that conversation since he thinks a devil might die today if he does not get him some food immediately. As all the devil students gush over the generosity and good looks of Adam, Adam buys some grocery and rushes to Skelly's house knowing damn well that his fridge must be empty due to recently moving out with lack of savings. When Adam rings Skelly on his phone, he has been busy trying to make the baby eat cat food for it to only pick up the kibbles and threw them while playing around. Skelly picks the call to directly reject joining Adam's religion, but this time Adam calls to talk about the grocery and his new pet. Skelly invites him over to witness the problem he's been facing with his new cat. As Adam reaches Skelly's door, he witnesses an alcoholic in broad daylight who's obviously none other than their dear friend Lily who get thrown out of the house for pouring vodka over her rice. Lily greets him excited since she knew Adam the nice devil would do something like bringing Skelly grocery. Adam once again tries to ask her to quit but the good boy's nagging makes the drunk woman jump on him torturing him to stop his nagging and convincing. Skelly responds to the doorbell to witness Adam, but with a lily on his back, he's surprised at her visit when Lily calls it meeting him by coincidence. But Adam tells her it wasn't really a coincidence if she knew and expected him here. Lily is about to hit Adam once again due to his attitude but both are interrupted when an embarrassed Skelly decides to show them his pet. This leaves the two speechless and stuck for quite a food amount of time. Later while peeling apples, Adam shares his concern over the cat being sick enough to be balding and Skelly not having enough savings to handle hospital bills. The conversation then shifts to how Skelly had decided a balanced amount of expenses since he does not eat much but Lily and Adam share how his expenses are bound to go up since he does not have that much mana anymore. 
Skelly then shares his concern over the cat not eating cat food so Adam shares about the possibility of it needing milk so they pour the baby milk in his cat bowl only to receive a splash of the baby's hand into the milk. Skelly scolds the baby while cleaning its hand with the print saying demon god loves you that he got as an anniversary gift at his church. Lily and Skelly then notice the cat wearing clothes too when they wonder about them and the hand being soaked with milk. They all munch on apples since Adam has been on a diet as they discuss how Skelly needs to teach the baby how to feed itself. They all assume that the baby has been acting out since it's way too young to comprehend it all. Skelly then tries to lower its head into the bowl to make it teach how to drink only for the baby to slurp down the milk so fast that the three are left confused on why it didn't do it the first time. They assume that the baby with its face in the bowl must have been really hungry. Being the only sane devil, Adam screams asking the two to get the baby's head out of the bowl since it obviously is drowning. He knocks some sense into the noseless skeleton about his cat not being able to breathe. Skelly then spoon feeds milk to the baby finding it dreadful due to the pace and effort, definitely not expecting to have a pet that requires this amount of work from him. After telling him to be patient and not of the baby choke by feeding it fast, the two friends inquire about the neighbor how shouted wanting the pet silence to which Skelly shares the neighbor being bothered about him and his noise since the tone he shifted. Lily being the chaotic soul decides to go have a conversation with the said neighbor while the goody at knowing his sister damn well tries to stop her from going. Meanwhile Skelly tries to stop Adam from stopping Lily. The chain of stopping each other is broken as Adam knows well that Lily is going out there to talk through her fist. And damn right he finds Lily chugging on her alcohol to balance her blood alcohol levels to have an interesting interaction with the short-tempered neighbor. Upon Adam's insistence, she decides to only use words in her interaction but she threatens Adam about the consequences of his involvement in all this. Lily then moves ahead and starts ringing the doorbell of the neighbor continuously with the excuse of inviting the neighbor to join the Church of Demon God. Adam tries to stop her since it's not the right way to invite someone to religion. But Lily being her annoying self makes the excuse of only using words against the neighbor. As the two banter about it, the annoyed neighbor opens his door ready to face whoever disturbed him like crazy. As the two face the neighbor, Lily stands there with a confident grin while Adam gets a bit nervous at the shady neighbor with snake hair. As he inquires upon who rang the doorbell, Adam tries to address Lily who's not been responding. Suddenly it clicks to Adam that the snake she mentioned seeing the time of shifting was indeed a stray hair of the scary neighbor. He then recalls a childhood memory of her father bringing snake liquor at home and Lily excitedly opening it only to find out that the snake inside the jar was alive and as Lily was about to take a sip, she got bit by the snake on her nose. This concludes why his fierce friend is scared of only one thing, the snakes. And the confident grin is nothing but her being frozen right there at the sight of the snakes. The neighbor starts to get even more annoyed at the stone girl and the panicked boy. Meanwhile, as Skelly waits for the two and calls them out, he notices the baby drooling again but the drool soon turns into a proper vomit. This scares Skelly and he runs outside towards the pet hospital leaving Adam confused but he's stopped by the neighbor from following his running friend. At the Patopia, Mr. Cat Doctor checks up on the baby's health and informs Skelly that the throwing up was only because of drinking milk too fast and how Skelly needs to be sure that the baby burps after eating, drinking to avoid having gastric issues. The doctor then asks what other tests Skelly was interested in getting done to which Skelly shares how he wants to confirm if it really is a cat or not. The doctor turns towards her screen telling Skelly how it researched about how he researched on the internet and found an animal that looks familiar to the baby. The doctor shows Skelly a picture of an obese cat who's sitting like a baby due to the excessive weight and tells Skelly that it indeed is a mutant obese cat that is diseased with excessive baldness hence the hair loss. The doctor even edits an image of the obese cat to remove its hair and show it exactly like the baby's skin. The doctor tells him that the genetic disorder can't be cured but the diet and care of this special cat would be different due to its weaker skin and different genetics. He asks Skelly to bring the cat every two weeks for checkup since it's a rare case and needs to be examined but to Skelly's relief, the examination would be cost-free. But of course Skelly has to pay for the current checkup and the discounted bill turns out to be 80% of his monthly food budget leaving him with almost nothing. On the other hand, Adam had handled the situation by gifting the neighbor another one of his church towels which the neighbor rudely accepted. He then took his frozen friend and put her to rest. As she recovers, he keeps ringing Skelly to know about his whereabouts but Skelly doesn't pick up. Skelly walks through the door in a tired manner casually mentioning to Adam how he found a name for the cat and the best suited name for it is Money Leech. Adam is confused so he starts with the first question in his mind. 
the question being where Skelly so randomly ran off. Skelly briefs him about the whole hospital situation and takes out the feeding bottle telling Adam that the vet gave it to him to feed the cat milk. As he fills the bottle, some of the milk spills down but this time Adam refuses to let him use his church towel to clean the mess up so Skelly looks around and finds the cat's hat that he took of earlier. Adam is surprised at the cat even wearing a hat along with clothes while Skelly pauses for a moment seeing the butterfly stitched on the hat. He suddenly uses the word Nabai and both the guys find it fitting to name the cat with the butterfly hat as Nabai is Korean for butterfly. So eventually, Skelly uses his towel to wipe milk off his floor. Professor Go, the specialist about Animal Kingdom, receives a picture of Nabai from the hospital and Mago, the vet, calls her to talk about the situation at hand. Go thinks it looks more like a piglet than a cat but Mago tells her that it behaves more like a cat so the owner believed it to be a cat and Mago convinced her more about it even though he has no idea what that species is. Go tells Mago to examine it in more detail while Mago already had it planned hence why he asked Skelly to bring it in every two weeks. They both consider this new specie as an interest subject for some new research. Skelly has no idea what danger Nabai holds for herself. Skelly gets a deja vu of waking up in his old him due to the bright sunlight coming through the curtains but it's actually his apartment window. He comes to his senses at the weird snoring noise and someone breathing right in his face. He opens his eyes to have a sleeping Adam right in his face. Skelly pushes Adam who was peacefully sleeping with his tail in his hands. FF the bad realizing how the three of them were crammed asleep in his single bed with Nabai in the space above their heads. Skelly curses Adam for breathing in his face while Adam straight up wishes curse of his god on him. All this noise wakes up Nabai and like any typical baby, the wailing begins. Skelly pushes Lily's leg away to get the noisy little pet to stop crying which wakes the drooling lady who just realizes that she's not at her own home. Skelly feeds Nabai with milk feeling drained at the fact that he's gonna need to manually feed her every meal while he has commitments for the day. Lily is surprised to hear that the vet suggested feeding Nabai six meals a day while Adam tells Skelly that taking her to the volunteer work won't be a good idea as the elder demons there could be allergic to her hair. As a gesture of appreciation for Skelly letting them stay over, Lily offers taking care of Nabai while he gets done with his volunteer work. As Lily leaves with Nabai, Skelly expresses his concern about considering Lil a friend yet having a hard time trusting her while Adam agrees since the reason lies right in front of their eyes, the drinking devil woman traveling home. In the church, Adam gracefully narrates to everyone a story of the demon god while more people are focused on his looks than the religious conversation. Adam then passes everyone a smile concluding his conversation with a prayer while the whole sitting of the church turns red at his smile, be them youngsters or the elderly. Skelly stands at the end behind a person on wheelchair who hasn't been listening to anything. The elderly goblin, Mr. Sundal's care his Skelly's volunteer work. The one minus five-year-old goblin strikes a conversation about youngsters taking up the front rows while Skelly makes him aware that the first row is occupied by the elderly and not the kids. Suddenly Mr. Sundal turns to him inquiring who he is. Turns out Skelly has to care for a patient with dementia who forgets everything every little while other than remembering to share his war stories for the thousandth time. An annoyed Skelly tries to make him recall that he has told the story million times already when his phone lights up in his pocket scaring the forgetful elderly lost in his war zone. He starts exclaiming of it being a bomb when Skelly tries to tell him that it's a smartphone but chooses to use the term telephone midway. The issue is that Sundal retrieves his memory as randomly as he loses it so he starts getting annoyed at Skelly telling him he knows what a smartphone is. Skelly actually got a message from the vet asking to pick up some stuff he forgot to hand him. Lily enters the house and makes her dog greet the cat friend she bought him to play. Her parent calls out from another room for her company to better not be another devil but she consoles them and just warns her house to not be too surprised at the sight of the cat that looks like a boiled egg. And as soon as she completes her sentence, she dozes off right on the ground leaving Nabai unattended and free to crawl anywhere. Lily wakes up to a strange smell while her dog licks her face. She says a yellow liquid on the floor and jokes of how there's zero possibility that it is spilled tequila since she'd never let that happen. Her eyes trail to the culprit who is no other than Nabai who so conveniently peed herself. As Skelly wraps up his volunteer work, Sundal's wife visits him where a discussion occurs of Sundal mentioning every other relative who is no longer a part of their life now. Adam and Skelly witness a part of the conversation and then take their leave. On the other hand, Lily exclaims for her sibling Louis, wanting to borrow clothes of his doll since Nabai's clothes are dirty and the doll clothes would definitely fit her. Louis is surprised yet unbothered and gets up to look at the cat that would need doll clothes and fit in them. He observes Nabai and calls her ugly along with some other graceful words about her. Lily still calls Nabai cute, 
and insists on getting clothes from Louis so he agrees to give her one of the items. But Lily calls it lame. He then lets her choose from the pile of clothes he's ready to throw away since he's busy applying for a contest online. So Lily chooses one of the outfits she finds interesting. Mago shows fake enthusiasm about meeting Skelly and asks about the whereabouts of the pet to which a weirded out Skelly responds in honesty. Mago being the mean cat breed, straightforwardly expresses her shock at Skelly doing volunteer work and talks about how he doesn't look like one to do such work. The excessive rant of the vet starts to get in Skelly's nerves till he finally gets to the point of giving Skelly a lotion and telling him to bathe his pet every evening and use it on its skin. He shares the price of the lotion being 20,001 which is exactly the remaining amount of food savings Skelly has left. Skelly interrupts Mago in between informing him of the name of the pet being Nabi. Mago is left excited and surprised at the name. He later calls Professor Go and the conversation about the name even piques Go's interest since her first research was about butterflies and this new discovery seems to have the mention of butterfly. Nabi, too. Mago sucks up to her about being excited to be a part of the credits of this discovery along with informing her about Skelly's volunteer work every at church's hospital every weekend so Go can visit to establish a coincidental relation with the owner of their interesting specie. Go draws a drawing of Nabai's body shape as if it's a pin lab rat and grins sickly at it. Skelly calls out Nabai who's busy playing with Lily's dog and feels offended at Nabai not responding to her owner's name. Lily reminds him that he just decided the name and didn't even address her by it before so he's got to give her time to adapt to it. Skelly picks up the baby hoping it's only taking time to adapt to its name and not dumb. Lily hands him a bag as a gift. Skelly is awed at the dress she gifted for Nabi fascinated by its combination of being classic and modern at the same time. She shares how Louis made these doll clothes that surprisingly fit Nabi perfectly. She then notices the lack of her brother in Skelly's company since she wanted to ask them for dinner. Skelly himself shares bewilderment about Adam's whereabouts since they last parted after the volunteer work when Adam inquired about the where Skelly was headed and then went to go talk to the butler. Lily and Skelly are amused by how invested Adam is in his religion. Skelly takes his leave after thanking Lily for Nabi's care. Adam's butler decides to call him talking about some schedule he texted to the butler. The butler requests Adam to send him the photo of the person in subject since the butler's master has been wanting to see the face since a long time. Adam shares worry about getting caught red-handed, but the butler insists him to do it discreetly, emotionally blackmailing him about the age of their master who's been worried due to some recent unrevealed incident about their son and wants a picture of their only son. He further shares gratitude towards Adam for sharing the well-being of their young master who's being really stubborn. Anyone can guess that the stubborn young master in topic could be no other than Skelly, the skeleton. Adam calls it doing what he thought was right so the butler shares how his master speaks highly of Adam's honest and upright attitude. This buttering by the butler works wonders as a flabbergasted Adam readily agrees to try and get the photo. He butler, after ending the call, calls him naive and someone that could easily be swayed but he is stopped by his master who calls that naiveness the reason why he's their source of information. The butler changes the conversation to his worry about Skelly as he is not someone who is careful about their diet and it was only his father's mana that was keeping him healthy before and now they have no idea how his health could be. He then mentions Skelly's addiction with the smoke candy. He used to stop Skelly from having it all the time while Skelly, having the high attitude as always, used to wave him off. Skelly visits the grocery store with the small amount of money he has left and gets himself some necessary items. But while paying, he is enchanted by the advertisement of the new apple-flavored smoke candy and expresses his interest in buying it. But soon his charm is broken when he realizes that it's not healthy for Nabi so he chooses to buy a chocolate for himself instead. Nabi tries to wave her hands showing her interest in wanting the chocolate Skelly has been munching on but knowing cats do not settle well with chocolates, he denies giving it to her making it even since he gave up his favorite candy for her. Louis is finally finished with the cape of the dress he's entering the contest for, only the dummy having the dress is empty, and the dress is gone. Louis rushes out asking if Lily has seen the blue dress on his desk. Lily who's chilling on the floor with her dog shares how Skelly loved the dress when she gave it to him. Louis exclaims how that dress was his piece for the contest while an unbothered Lily reminds him that he asked her to take anything from the desk and it's pretty obvious she'd choose a good one to gift it to a friend. This brings out an expected loud cry from a helpless Louis. Skelly prepares the bath for his dear pet. Using a sensitive scalp-based shampoo and a cute duck sponge, he bathes Nabi impressed at how happy and calm she is for a cat taking bath. He then wraps Nabi into a towel burrito and warns her to not wander off naked. Skelly then prepares to freshen up himself but there's something that's nagging him. 
He waves the thought off thinking he'd remember it later. On the other hand, Louis has locked himself in his room while Lily is being held accountable in front of the panicked parents of the weird devil's siblings. She keeps giving the logic of Louis leaving it on the table. Her parents request her to bring it back, but the loyal friend does not want to take something back after giving it. But the cost of loyalty is no bigger than a bottle of tequila. Bribed Lily jumps off towards Skelly's house to bring back the dress right away. On her way, Lily calls Skelly but he doesn't pick up so she correctly guesses that he must be taking a shower which he definitely will get out of by the time she reaches him. Skelly walks out of shower naked, feeling weirdly off. It makes him wonder if he's gonna get sick, but his thoughts are broken when his feet bones bang into a shopping bag. Skelly gets annoyed about what the bag is still doing in the middle of the floor till he realizes he's not at his father's home and he no longer has servants to handle all his chores. While picking the bag, Skelly notices the lotion inside the bag and that's when it clicks to him that he forgot to apply the lotion on Nabi right after shower. Thinking it still might not be too late, he decides to apply it to Nabi right away. But like any normal baby, Nabi resists the oily stuff on herself, so Skelly decides to pick her up and apply it. That turns out to be a big chaotic mistake by Skelly. All the lotion on her body and his hands makes Nabi slip out of his hold and fall not on the ground but right onto the gaps of his pubis. Nabi gets stuck into the pubis giving the visuals of fruits in a bowl. But the poor skeleton can't think about that's how internal organs might look if they had any since his pubic symphysis has so conveniently separated. Hence begins the competition of who could cry louder between Nabi and Skelly. Lily reaches outside the apartment and hears a scream making her wonder if someone broke a bone. It takes her a moment to realize that there's one friend of hers in the vicinity that has the weakest bones. She dashes towards Skelly's apartment and happily breaks the lock of the door to look at what might be happening. She opens the door to the horrendous sight of Nabi stuck in Skelly's pubis and the both of them screaming. So, Lily helps her friend the best way by joining in the screaming harmony with the both of them. Suddenly, Nabi slips out of the pubis and falls onto bed courtesy the lotion that saved his bones, and Skelly whose soul almost left his bones also falls down on the bed sighing in relief. Drowning out Nabi's cries, an a traumatized yet amused Lily congratulates Mr. Skeleton on giving birth to a cat and offers to share the happiness with his father who became a granddad. A totally exhausted Skelly warns her to stop the teasing. Lily closes the door which creaks back open since she obviously broke the lock earlier. Skelly, who's lying down tired and ready to doze off, inquires if she locked the door getting a confidently affirmative response that he doesn't know is a lie. He thanks Lily for calming Nabi and helping out with everything after the incident to which she calls it nothing since she obviously came to get back a gift and broke the door as cherry on top. She rummages through the drawers and gets out a tape to tape lock the door. Skelly who cannot see the broken door asks about the tape making her lie once again that she feels safer that way. Skelly leaves that weird response and questions why she came and why would anyone leave a chance to joke about the incident there. Lily responds that she came to congratulate him for his first birth making an embarrassed Skelly push her hand off. She sits beside the bed on the floor and texts her family that she'll bring back the dress the next day. Her parents inform Louis along with being ready to set Lily straight next morning for staying out two nights in a row. Lily then shares the whole incident with Skelly and apologizes for wanting the dress back. But Skelly tells her not to worry since that was already a favor on him and the dress was actually too pretty to be thrown away. Lily offers to take care of Nabi every weekend as an apology, but Skelly tells her not to worry. Their lighthearted conversation is cut off by the door creaking open again and Lily running to tape it again. Skelly this time decides to mention that he can guess she broke the door earlier, but it's fine since she only did it to try to help him. He then asks her to not worry and that they should sleep. Sundal gets a flashback of his war life where his goblin friend, Gokdal, woke him one night telling him he found an apple tree somewhere nearby and he waited the night to go get some apples since he's been hungry the whole day. Sundal tries to stop him since he could be attacked by being considered as a deserter but he's so heavily drowsy that he keeps nodding off while talking and could not come completely into his senses to stop his friend. Gokdal decides to go get two apples and leaves before Sundal manages to wake up and stop him. Sundal exclaims his name to stop him but it's actually him waking up from his dream. He sadly mutters that Gokdal left even though he told him not to while observing the two apples on his side table. As the sun comes up, Skelly's landlady, a rabbit, approaches his apartment door and bangs on it asking him to quiet down his cat since she couldn't sleep a wink because of it. The pissed-off snake-haired neighbor also comes out looking like he's ready to kill either the neighbor or the cat. He's about to bust him when the landlady asks him to calm down since she has spare keys but as they try to open the door, the doorknob comes out into her hand. 
Mr. Snakehead is excited to serve this as an excuse to kick Skelly out but she tells him that it wasn't that big of a property damage. Both of them then force their way inside the tape door to find Skelly on the floor with wailing Nabi in his lap looking so terrifying that they exclaim he's dead. As Lily sleeps on bed unbothered about it, Snakehead and Landlady try to call the police while Skelly repeats that he's not dead. Yet, speciesism, a crime like racism, has been taking a hit in the devildom. Some species have been showing hate speeches towards the species that are considered lower ranked to them and it's the act of the devils of age 150, the age that's considered prime youth and full of hormones for the devils. The news reporter takes the insight of an analyzer Professor Kim who discusses and explains to the reporter that demon species vary with their population and their lifespans in the deviledom, and many species have been showing violence in speech towards the ones lower to them and ignoring the ones higher in lifespan to them clearly giving signs of hypocrisy and pathetic attitude. A government agency named Department of Ego Killing, DEK, has been formed to give these perpetrators a reality check and treat them. Professor Kim explains that in the DEK, these people are dealt with by first deleting their social media accounts and making them irretrievable then the speech of these perpetrators is recorded and their peers hear and comment on it. and then finally they're given lectures to reduce their ego and bring their self-esteem to normal. It may take as less than as three months or as long as multiple years for people to learn but once they do, they regret what they've ever done to others. The treated ones become so docile that one of the former perpetrators even wrote a book on how he regretted what he did and wanted to bury himself. As the landlord, Ms. Rabbit hears the news while munching on her carrots. She hears the news of the Demon King not attending the Spring Festival this time too. She talks to herself about how that young king might be sick but he gave the reason of not having time so she again talks to herself that he obviously has more important things than attending the Spring Festival. Make a rabbit in her 500 seconds. She tends to talk to herself and she continues her self-talk about increasing unemployment and youth realizing that she lives around a lot of youth and the snakehead guy also had an interview today. She suddenly gets a call that makes her super excited. Adam works out in his apartment while listening to the hymn about Devil God when his door head knocked and an enthusiastic Lily appears with Nabi hanging on one arm and Skelly on the other. He asks why is Skelly being carried like that by her to which she smiles telling it's because he's light but of course that's not what was being questioned by Adam. Skelly moves his head and tells Adam he got kicked out of his apartment for the day and needs a place to crash to when Lily tells him she's about to get an earful from her mother so can't take him there. Skelly then offers doing what Adam has been wanting him to do since start of the semester as a favor and Adam accepts the offer right away. Some women devils hang around a cliff near Adam's house having picnic when an ogre woman peeks questioning who just entered his house. A dog-like devil reminds her that it's a crime to peek into others' houses hut she claims to be peeking at Adam. She tells her then it's the same thing so the ogre devil gives reasoning by the story of a boy who sits on a cliff looking at the beautiful rich girl playing piano in her home. The dog devil tells her that it was a crime too so the ogre, realizing her mistake, decides they should leave right away then but some of the companions question after accidentally looking there that what Adam and the guest are doing only to witness the shadows of them kissing each other. All of them are left shocked but the most shocked and scary is the 150-year-old ogre whose hormones and emotions are at a peak at this age. Mr. Snakehead's interview starts off on the wrong foot when the cranky interviewer notices his snakes falling asleep during the middle of the interview. The dog interviewer starts from his left but the confusion of whether it's his left or the other. A little devil interviewing speaks up only to get a shut up call and an insult that sounds pretty much like speciesism towards it. The devil on the left answers the question confidently, but due to the lack of sleep, Mr. Snakehead can't formulate an answer and awkwardly tries to buy time disappointing the interviewer who then totally skips over the poor little devil. He then proceeds with the next question that is again unanswerable by Snakehead who feels way too embarrassed to be sitting there at the moment. On the other hand, the women try to convince Miss Yon, the ogre, that it might be the wrong angle. And they might not be kissing while she looks too stunned wondering if Adam has a girlfriend and getting jealous of why she couldn't have a chance with him. The dog woman tried to calm her that it might not be kissing but everyone is too naive to hear the word kissing again and again without feeling shameful. As they all convince her, Yonwa tried to think of what else could they be doing but her hormones get the best of her and she dashes towards his apartment to get to know who the person is. The best part is that it's not the angle that makes them look like they're kissing. Adam and Skelly are actually making out. While Lily chills with Nabi on the bed, enjoying the sight in her tequila, Adam has always been curious what it feels like to kiss a skeleton so he had asked Skelly to let him give it a try but obviously Skelly denied. Till now that is. Adam feels disappointed as the kiss felt like slamming the lips to a wall. Skelly tells him he warned about it. 
Lily also intervenes mentioning how she told Adam that it was like kissing a wall, but Adam wanted to either have an opinion from someone who actually kissed a skeleton or do it himself. That is when Lily reveals she actually kissed Skelly at the beginning of the semester. Adam is sad that she did it before him while Skelly excuses that she was much more curious than Adam and back then Adam and Skelly weren't as close. Of course this statement would be even more sad for the dramatic and sentimental Adam who turns away and tells Adam to leave with his cat. Skelly sighs knowing he has to prove him and Adam are BFFs while Lily enjoys herself. Lily takes her leave even though Adam tells her to stay for breakfast but the alcoholic knows she needs to get home to get over the quota of anger her parents have for her. As she walks back leisurely sipping on her drink, Yonwa passes by and notices Lily. She stops and tries to have Lily hash question, but the unbothered Lily tries to wave her off by telling she doesn't belong to the building. She holds Lily's arm making her mad that she lifts her fist but a trembling Yonwa stops her telling her it's something important. Lily noticed the petite Yonwa and finds similarity with Louis in her so lowers her fist ready to hear what she has to say. Yonwa takes her somewhere alone so nobody overhears their conversation. Skelly and Nabai dozed off right as they hit the bed. Adam noticed the exhausted duo and tries to click a picture of Skelly from afar but the angle he is hiding at, Nabai is covering Skelly's face. Adam has to move near to get a clear picture of Skelly's face and he proceeds to do, sure at the sound of the heavy snoring that Skelly and Nabai are not in light sleep. But, Adam seems to have forgotten that snoring is not a trait of every devil in Deviltum. Especially not of the skeletons who don't even breath. A nervous Adam tries to get a picture of Skelly from up close, but even in nervousness he tries to observe Skelly in different filters to get a good picture. But Adam is left all blank when Skelly suddenly opens his eyes questioning why is his picture being taken. Adam manages to stutter out the lie of finding Skelly sleeping with Nabai Cute and taking his pictures for that. He then casually adds not getting a clear picture so he's gonna take it again and send him. Skelly is unbothered and tells him to do whatever. While Adam thinks of how he'll erase all proofs of his real motive later, Skelly speaks again freaking him out. But he's only asking why Adam is keeping the shutter sound of camera on. The innocent devil replies it's so he can know that the picture has been taken. Skelly sighs and thinks of him as worse than Mr. Sundal. The landlady rabbit's daughter called to inform it's getting married and will pick her stuff up from the house some time later. The landlady is excited about this and about the room being cleared and surfs through her child's room. She opens a boxes of all the childhood memories of her children to find a picture of her many rabbits crying. She thinks of how she can still hear them cry while on the other hand, the whole world can hear the cries of none other than Nabai, the not-so-cat. Skelly wakes up and drowsily looks at the crying baby but refuses to abandon his sleep for her. He is having a self-talk about not giving up this time as if he's the slave to her but he is stopped midway by a poke in the eye through the tiny hands of the wailing baby. Adam approaches the bed where Skelly and Nabai are once again in a competition of who can cry louder. Skelly cries and starts saying daddy, daddy as if he's a kid but stupid Adam gets excited and wanting to call Skelly's dad for him. Once the drama is over, Skelly feeds Nabai once again while Adam asks if he's actually feeding her every four hours since it's surprising from someone as lazy as Skelly. Skelly shares the story of the past night with Adam when he wasn't planning on waking up even with Nabai's cries but a scary looking Licky sat up beside him threatening him about the loud cries and her sobering up. Intimidated by her, Skelly got up to feed Nabai while Lily lied back again. Nabai suddenly stopped drinking milk. But that wasn't the end of it all for Skelly since the pause in the drink was to excrete what she had inside. Skelly notices she has had urinated and first time witnesses how the people with internal organs excrete waste. The foul smell wakes Lily up again while Skelly is simply disgusted by it. Lily notices how Nabai peed again and exclaims how alcohol can solve this problem. Skelly thinks she's gonna help him with the situation. But by problem solving Lily only meant chugging down sips of alcohol till she has no sense left so she can sleep peacefully. Hence, Skelly had to manage with Nabai along the whole night. Skelly concludes his story to Adam along with sharing how not having any liver or other organs, he couldn't even get wasted like Lily, so he had to clean the whole mess up alone. Of course the best end to this story is Adam mentioning to Skelly how Nabai peed on him again. Mr. Snakehead sits on a bench and munches on his lunch when the worry of how much money he has left strikes him again but he pushes it to the back of the head since the alone bench time is for stress relieving. His alone time is cut short when a little distance ahead, Yonhua and Lily come to stop and Yonhua decides to finally talk. Right before Yonhua questions Lily, she lays out all the possible ways in which she could ask Lily as she was kissing Adam or does she haven't anything to do with him. But in every scenario, she could see Lily getting offended, 
calling her a stalker and reporting her to the Department of Ego Killing. Lily starts to get impatient at the silence from Yon, unaware of how the little girl is regretting her decision of stopping Lily to talk. Mr. Snakehead on the other hand is ready to witness a commotion and wishes that these people could disappear from the peaceful park. He finds similarity in Lily's behavior with his brothers who causes trouble everywhere. As the other devils accompanying Yonghua catch up to them, Mr. Snakehead texts his little brother who seems to be ignoring him. The other devil women inquire if Yonhua said something wrong to Lily but Lily tells them that the ogre has been mute all this while. They mentally thank God and try to cover up for the situation by telling Lily how they work as a weird organization, the Red Lotus Group, who work to get rid of people's toxic exes or sort out complicated relationships. They give Lily their card and tell her that Yonhua might have come across as dangerous with this situation, but she's young and still needs to handle their work well. Lily listens to it all and wonders where the scary part about Yonhua is as she's been trembling and quivering all the while she interacted with Lily and is still super still and nervous. As an apology, they offer Lily a job she needs to get done from their organization, free of cost. Skelly washes up himself in Nabai and covers Nabai in his jacket. On the other hand, the skeleton himself is dressed in a super professional black suit as if ready to go for some meeting. He asks Adam if he can have any other clothes but Adam had thrown out all his other clothes when he got baptized and now the clergyman has only a limited number of formal wear and church robes that he uses for his job. Skelly thanks Adam for lending the clothes and bids him a goodbye to leave for his own apartment. Adam sighs and sends the picture he took of a tire, sleeping Skelly to his father. As Skelly walks home, he is super embarrassed due to the attention coming from other devils because his dear cat just wouldn't stop crying loudly. He tries to shush her while walking up the bridge and regrets getting a pet at all. He wonders how nice it would have been to have gotten a proper pet, and not a diseased cat that is eating up his bills. As he walks on the bridge, lost in his thought, he is startled by the train passing since it's very close to the bridge. As he settles down from the surprise, he realizes that his very unique pet would have been scared too and damn right what he dreaded the most happened again. Nabai started wailing even louder, drawing more attention of devils to the weird-looking pet of Skelly. Skelly's father is even more worried at the picture and shares with the butcher that he can no longer sit still and witness this situation of his son. He asks the butler to send another demon to keep an eye on Skelly and if he is actually in the condition that seems like in the picture, then he is free to forcefully bring Skelly back home. The butler already seems to have a plan in his mind and only awaits the approval of his master. The butler's plan is rejected as the Devil King does not want to force Skelly to come back. He asks him to check the condition and wait for some time before forcing him or he'll run away again. The butler tries to intervene but he's told to do as commanded. The Devil King suddenly starts feeling sick, worrying the butler about the deteriorating health of his master so he tries again to want to bring Skelly back by force but it's of no use so he's asked to swear to not disobey the king. The butler swears to him but he's very apologetic as he believes that no promise is as serious as his master's health and he will do anything to bring Skelly back for his sake. Skelly is having his smoke candy outside the house. He feels pathetic at how he can't do it inside his room due to a chaotic pet that's not even cute. He realizes that even with all the nuisance, he still ironically loves his little Nabai. Skelly overhears the news from a window nearby where the absence of Demon King from last two big events is being reported along with the announcement that he'll most definitely attend the next one. Skelly seems to get into a deep thought about his father missing two events in a row but remains adamant on not returning hoping he'd give up on Skelly soon. As he enters back his room, he quiets his steps since Nabai is sleeping peacefully. The landlady visits him and shares with him how she found a few stuff she used to use when her children were little and offers him a blanket that is used to cover children. Skelly finds it nice for Nabai when the landlady adds how this is a sleeping blanket that drowns out all the worries and anxiety of the user if a little mana is added to it. She talks about how the cat has been disturbing for everyone around but the anxiousness pf the cat is understandable on being separated from her mother and living alone. She then moves forward to talk about Snakeheads who has been real cranky and troubled lately and he was worried about messing his interview upon not getting enough sleep. The mentioned guy is seen to be sleeping covering his head while his phone buzzes with a text from some unregistered number. The landlady hopes that the two neighbors can get along while Skelly agrees intending to personally properly apologize to him first thing in the morning. Skelly sits down and looks at Nabai who yawns in her sleep surprising Skelly who finds it as cute as little demons while the demons might have a conflicted opinion about finding Nabai cute. Skelly suddenly gets a text from Mago, the vet, to check his email. This pisses Skelly off on getting a text from the vet this late in night. He opens the mail to find a properly made guide on how to manage Nabai's lifestyle. 
Skelly is left amazed at how devoted Mako is about this and changes his opinion about Mako. Professor Go is pissed off at Mako for sending her the same lifestyle manual as her interests are not on how to treat mutants, but on how to create mutants but Mako seems to he a cat devil that likes to go by the law and won't do anything that goes against ethics and laws. Go is sure that Mago will even report her if she tries something like that in presence of Mago so trying to get along with the owner of the pet won't be of any use either. She wishes to get her hands on that pet to study it in detail and perform experiments but of course she can't do it on her own. She brings out a card titles Errant Knights which is about an organization that does odd jobs of people for money. She offers them a heavy amount of money in return of kidnapping the hairless pig she's sending them picture of. She also tells them to make sure Go's name is not involved whether they're successful at the job or not. Now all Go has to do is wait and see if this plan works. And just like that, Navi pees again. Skelly taps with a rolled paper on her head telling her to excrete in the place he'd set up for her since he expected her to be potty trained like other pets are but once again, his is way too different. And what Skelly gets in response to his scolding is a fart from Navi. He dresses her up in a panda onesie and gives her some rat toys to play with but Nabai is not actually a cat to play with the rats so she turns away and plays with random stuff while dancing around. Skelly opens the manual and reads how he should try using diapers on her to keep her clothes from getting dirty. He has no idea what diapers are but decides to go and shop for them to see if they work. He notices Nabai dancing but thinks how to cat dance. He also has to buy Mew toys for her since the rat toys have been abandoned, but he decides to just get broke on diapers for the day. He once again puts Nabai in his jacket to go buy diapers from the household items mart. An octopus devil, who's a supermarket thief, dresses up as one of the workers at the dark mart and decides to do a light stealing of some shopping carts for the day by blending in as a sweeper. His thought process is interrupted by Skelly who tries to get some help considering him an employee. The octopus tries to ignore him, but Skelly properly grabs him to get his attention. The octopus turns around and witnesses the skeleton which he's never seen before in 300 years of his life. Another thing he's never seen before is someone saying it's their first time shopping at a mart so they need guidance. He considers him weird but nevertheless agrees to help Skelly to get over with it. Skelly on the other hand is grateful along with being apologetic for rudely grabbing him. Skelly tells him about wanting diapers only so he might not need a cart. The octopus is bewildered at a young devil wanting diapers so Skelly shows him the pet they're gonna be for. The octopus considers it a panda due to the dress and thinks of Skelly as a rich guy. He then guide him towards the diapers but Skelly does not want a whole pack he just needs a few to try for some days. The octopus tells him that this big pack won't run for long since babies use about 10 a day. The thief empathizes mentally with Skelly knowing he won't be stealing if he didn't have expenses of his kids. He then takes 101 from Skelly as an excuse for using the cart, scamming the skeleton, and reducing his stealing efforts. A yeti, named Yeji, posts on her social media about drawing eyeliner like some influencer and asking for reviews about how it looks. The comments of the post start to have an argument about posting pictures of both eyes and Yeti's having only one eye. Yeji is frustrated at the lame argument in her comments while her roommate tells her to not post if she gets annoyed but Yeji wants to keep posting like a classy city girl. The roommate warns her about the accent changing to original so Yeji changes it back. The third guy, who was seen in Mr. Snakehead's interview comes back talking about the interview going poorly but the yellow-haired working out roommate disses the guy about doing poorly on the interview and blaming it on the others. They all start to have a banter about the whole interview thing when the conversation shifts to their actual job. They are actually the Aaron Knights who have gotten the job of kidnapping Nabai, but their attention span is good enough that they all start another argument about the workout person to remain fully dresses as it's uncomfortable for the others. The whole argument makes the other two devils to get into a physical fight when Yeji breaks them showing them the picture of the pet they're supposed to kidnap. Noticing the weird pet, the yellow-haired guy is left with his mouth hung open since it's sure of seeing something like that out in the human world. The yellow-haired guy tries to think of where he's seen the animal and what's it called but cannot recall it. He gets concerned over his lack of brain cells while Yeji, already expecting the disappointment, shows the name of the pet as Hairless Pig. The dumb guy accepts that it was a pig indeed while the interview guy shows concern over this not looking like normal pig. Yeji, a country girl, sees Pig for the first time which makes the other guy laugh but they're told to banter at his side while the yellow hair guy calls Mr. Octo about their new job. Mr. Octo is none other than the thief helping out Skelly and Nabai, his very new targets he's unaware of. Octo helps Skelly in using the cart and fitting Nabai in the baby seat that makes Skelly think it's the reason why devils might steal carts. He tells Skelly it was nice to meet a skeleton 
for the first time and turns away when he gets a call on his burner phone. He gives the whole intro of his organization Aaron Knights only for it to be his own partner. He tells him off for not telling the name right away and making him give a whole introduction. They then get to the point of their new job of kidnapping a pet. Mr. Yellowhair asks Octo about the job he was given and then tells him to do his job correctly this time and not mess up or he might have to get excluded from their errands. He then briefs Octo about the pet being a hairless pig and the owner being a skeleton. Octo is surprised to hear about Skeleton again and wonders if they're common in the city since he's from country. But when he's told that skeletons are not common and the pig is not normal looking, he puts two and two together and realizes that maybe that pet Skelly held was not a panda but disguised as panda to hide its weird look. He asks his partners to reach the Dark Mart as soon as possible. Skelly walks around different aisles wondering how weird it is from another specie to hear that they were pleased to see him. It made him feel like an endangered specie in a zoo. Nabai grabs a snake toy from one of the aisles and when Skelly comes out of his thoughts, he takes it from Nabai and places it back. The snake makes him realize how he still needs to talk to his neighbor, and he wonders if he should buy a gift for them. Being low on budget, he visits the sales section where his little pet once again grabs a bunny stuffed toy. He tries to put it back but she keeps a hold of it. Skelly contemplates buying it but the price is too high so he tries to put it back. But taking something back from a baby is another one of hardest things to face. As Skelly gets close to taking it away, Nabai starts crying so to avoid any more drama, he lets her have it. Nabai stops crying right after she's left alone just like any other dramatic baby. Skelly is surprised at how easily she fooled him. He then calls Lily who's been teaching him on how to live like a commoner and asks what he should buy as a gift for the neighbor. She tells him to buy some household item that an independent youngster can put into use. She then asks him what kind of specie the neighbor was again only to shut the call right after hearing the answer since the answer was her favorite specie related. Louis opens the door in the background and notices his sister on her knees, hands in the air with a board hanging on the neck saying she won't stay out overnight anymore. The conversation between Loli and Skelly ends and as Skelly tries to look for a gift, the Aaron Knights close in on their potential suspect to kidnap Nabai. Skelly is walking around the mart when a book about the time when devils and humans lived together caught his attention. He noticed the familiarity in the book compared to what he had in his childhood and indeed it is the revised addition to that book. The Aaron Knights argue in the background about moving around too much but they're just following Skelly who seems to be exploring the whole mart to find a gift. He gets engrossed in the book that mentions how the devils used to hunt humans back in the day and live off peacefully but once a devil ate a contaminated human and got contaminated himself along with spreading it to his entire neighborhood, killing them all. Then the humans started becoming more clever and violent, and started hunting devils which is why the two separated paths, and the humans were deemed as dangerous creatures, hence told to kill them when witnessed. The book also talked about how the devils of that time always savor the taste of humans and mention how they'd do anything to have taste of one again. Skelly reads the book and thinks of how this book intrigued him in childhood to look around for depth and get grounded for wandering off while it still intrigues him to find a human and taste them. He thinks that maybe it's the lack of mana on top of his curiosity that makes him want to eat humans. Seeing him lost in the book is an opportunity. One of the knights try to abduct Nabai but right before their hand touches Nabai, she randomly throws her new stuffed toy at Skelly and gets his attention. Skelly is surprised at how attention-seeking Nabai is while the knight smoothly walks off to avoid getting caught. All three of them attempt one by one while Skelly tries to buy gifts like fruit baskets and toilet paper but every time Nabai smacks the bunny at Skelly as if she's got eyes at the back of her head and can sense them. Failed after many attempts, they try to find another way when Octo calls telling them he's free from his job now, which most probably was stealing, and can help them now. He finds Skelly who's been trying to choose frying pans as potential useful gift for his neighbor so he tries to help him choose the better one. Skelly is surprised at how helpful Octo is but he doesn't have an idea about how Octo smoothly stood between him and the cart so one of the knights could easily pick Nabai up and walk off. The Aaron Knight is finally successful and even surprised as Nabai is quietly just staring at him as he walks away and not making a noise. He quietly walks when Nabai just like before throws her rabbit as his chest. He lets the stuffed toy fall off to ground since the others are trying to rush him so he puts his hand on the mouth of a wriggling Nabai to quiet her and does not pick the toy. He doesn't realize how wrong his move was in Nabai's weird change in expressions as her transition to starting to cry. Suddenly Nabai starts crying loudly getting Skelly's attention who notices she's not in the cart and calls out the culprit. Skelly asks the kidnapper to stop right there but obviously who would stop in such a situation? As he tries to walk off as if he's not being called. He feels glad that the owner of the pet is a skeleton, 
When he was young, his grandma told him about the skeletons and how they live on a cliff like them so he asked in curiosity on why don't they come down. She told him that skeletons are not born unless someone blows their mana into the bones. And obviously when someone is blowing mana, they won't blow a lot of it into someone else to not lose it or waste it. This is why skeletons are weak and in no competition to other devils so to keep themselves safe, they live on top of a cliff. He felt satisfied that the resurrected creature is no match to him and can't fight him. But his present self suddenly wonders what is wrong with this skeleton since he got stopped while walking by not some physical force, but a suggestion spell that made him halt. Skelly also stands there wanting Nabai back while Octo tries to handle the situation diplomatically by telling him to avoid commotion. But his excuses fall short when Skelly suddenly drops to the ground and faints since he obviously used more mana in the spell than he had. Octo panics and excuses himself in front of a fainting Skelly to get some help. Skelly gets a flashback of an argument with his father where he mocks him for storing his mana inside Skelly to use him so his father took away all his mana to make him behave living the poor young skeleton too vulnerable. He suddenly wakes up after this weird flashback and tries to get up. The knight on the other hand is glad that Skelly got knocked out since the suggestion spell is almost ending and all he had to do is dash as soon as it breaks. He's about to run when Skelly manages to get up but instead of catching up he uses the greatest weapon in the history of Disney. A frying pan. He throws it at the abductor's head and knocks him out, making Nabai hit the ground as well but this is not enough as once again Skelly loses all his strength and passes out. The other two knights pick their blacked out friend and amused at passed out Skelly, also pick up a crying Nabai with a head bump to take her away. Skelly is surrounded by a lot of devils as they wonder if it's a specie or corpse when he suddenly wakes up scaring them. The three countryside Aaron knights are excited with their catch since back when they were finalizing on their jobs, they had hacked into their organization system and checked how much money was transacted to them as a deposit. Realizing they got 50 million won and it's only 20% of the actual money they'll be getting, they decide they'll run off and pay off their loans with this money once the job is done. So as they try to walk out of the mall, Skelly finally finds them and catches up to them grabbing Nabai back. Yeji and Goyle try to walk off while Mr. Yellow Hair tries to snatch Nabai back in the greed of the money, but Skelly's dark stare filled with mana makes him flinch so Yeji grabs him and runs off. Skelly consoles a crying and scared Nabai and hugs her to take her back home. As the three reach back their apartment, Yellowhead is mad so he starts punching and licking his boxing bag to get rid of the frustration. Coyle trues to console him that they weren't even sure if it was the same pet but Yellowhead even saw the zipper on the onesie and knows it was the same pig wanted by their client. Yeji knows they can't do this job anymore since Skelly has seen their faces so asks Goyle to delete all the info but something inside Yellowhead tells him they shouldn't have given up this soon so he asks Goyle to not delete the picture for now. Skelly reaches back and throws the bag on the ground. He feels so out of place that he is himself shocked that he managed to get back home normally and that too after picking up his card items and paying for them. He feels even more weird for calling this place his home while it's just an old shabby room where he lives alone and that too temporarily. He looks at Nabai who's giving him a warm look while gripping on her bunny and wonders if she's a little reed on the face. He changes Nabai into a lighter dress compared to the heavy oncey thinking that's why she was red and throws the oncey into the tub where all of Nabai's clothes are soaked, still not washed by the brat skeleton. Skelly realizes that the time is past Nabai's feeding time so gets the feeder and fills it with milk not realizing that the poor Nabai just fell off while perfectly sitting a moment ago. He then tried to feed the cat who he thinks is not traumatized at all hut Nabai doesn't drink. He read in the manual that her temperature can go up and down easily so decides to visit the hospital to get her checked. Mago checks up and finds Nabai's temperature perfectly fine and tells Skelly to not worry while an unbothered Nabai lies on her tummy with an exposed button between the two. Mago gives an excuse of leaving Nabai for the night to keep a check on her health but Skelly tells Mago that he won't feel comfortable doing that today. Mago ensures him that Nabai will be safe and sound so he can come by next afternoon to take her back. Skelly talks to Nabai about the situation as if she's gonna understand it when she bites his finger with the two tiny teeth she had. Skelly scolds her once again and then asks randomly about the fee for the stay only to get a bill that's even more traumatizing for him. In only a span of five days, he spent months of food deposit that he had. The three kidnappers have lunch where Goyle seems to be chill with a bandage on his head while Yellowhead throws tantrums for not being able to get that amount of money. Since they only get 5,000 won as food deposit monthly while the procurement team gets 8,000 won so he wishes he'd have joining them. 
Yeji tells him on how their job is just laundering stuff that'll inly cost them jail time if they get caught but the procurement team travels between the worlds so often that they'll be executed if caught. Yellowhead wonders what the right choice could be. Someone steps into the house where Skelly lives, but makes sure that no other devil comes across them. They try to peek into Skelly's home only to find JT empty from the site since he doesn't know Skelly is right in the next room gifting the neighbor a frying pan, apologizing for the disturbance, and improving their relation. Mr. Snakehead offers him coffee while politely accepting his apology and gift. Mr. Snake calls him in for coffee and makes the instant coffee for him. Even though Skelly doesn't like coffee, he takes it being courteous as he is offered to sit. He notices a picture of his neighbor's brother and asks about it only to hear how he is back home and must be chilling without him since he's very lazy. Skelly tastes the coffee and enjoys the sweet taste he did not expect it to have. The snake guy switches on the TV go kill the awkward silence and then strikes a conversation about Skelly. Skelly tells him he moved out to be near college since his house is on top of a cliff. He then shares how he only has his father who's so old that he dozes off in the middle of the conversation. Snakehead shares how his grandma used to be like that before passing and wonders if Skelly's father has passed away and he is unaware thinking he dozed off. Skelly accepts that his father is way older hence the weakness. The conversation ends with the breaking of the handle of the coffee mug. Yellowhead guy, still not introduced with name, still inquires about who called to wanting the hairless pig for themselves since no demon could be having this much amount of money to use normally. As he wonders, Yeji is busy using an eyelash curler so he offers them to use it too since Yeji no longer has interest in that job. As the TV shows Professor Go, Skelly mentions knowing them, and shares with his neighbor how the professor is really impressive as her research is not based on harming the animals while exploring them, but treating the mutants nicely and decently along with slowly researching about the Mal which is why she couldn't even get much papers published. Skelly is highly unaware that the person he's praising is trying to kidnap Nabai for illegal experimentation. Yellowhead still inquires about the voice of the lady who called along with himself getting distracted after getting their eyelashes done as they look like young demons freshly out of college and not some criminals. As the news goes by, it is reported that Octo is caught as the supermarket thief after months of chasing him. Snakehead is glad that a thief like that got caught unaware of the trauma of his neighbor refreshing. Skelly realizes that Octo was only nice to scam him and he recalls the events of the day before so he decides to take a leave to get his mind cleared. He goes outside only to find a familiar face waiting outside his room. They greet each other as Skelly wonders what she's doing there. Yellowhead and Yeji share their insight about the whole they look like criminals concept as nobody can tell criminals by face since anybody can become a criminal if pushed slightly off. They start by deceiving others for their own benefits and move ahead to become a criminal and start off evil work after that. This is a situation very similar to Mago analyzing Nabai by lying about her health. It's Edwards, the butler, son who came to meet Skelly, obviously sent by Edward to spy on him. He enters the apartment and calls Lily trouble after hearing the whole broken lock story, but Skelly just laughs it off knowing Lily is a good friend. He analyzes the apartment and thinks of how small it is and then notices the foul smell in the apartment but Skelly tells him he can't really taste or smell that strongly due to the lack of mana. His friend gets worried about there being problems with his mana when Skelly tells him that it's because his dad took most of it, shocking the boy since Edward didn't tell him all that. Skelly ends the topic not in mood to discuss it so he drops it for the moment. He finally finds the source of smell and opens the bathroom door to get a wave of strong staunch smell. He notices the dirty clothes not being Skelly's so being caught, Skelly confesses of getting a pet. He tells him not to tell Edward since his dad hates animals then never allowed it so he doesn't want him to know. He acts as if he didn't hear it and says it must be because his father doesn't want him to cry when the pet dies just like he did. He then inquires about this pet and worries upon knowing that it's already at the hospital so it must be pretty weak and won't last long. Meanwhile the said pet is busy messing with Mago pulling out his whiskers. His friend then mentions how the apartment is small so he shouldn't have gotten a pet since it's not a healthy environment for it. But Skelly knows he's been fulfilling all the basic needs of his pet. But he keeps on nagging him repeating the same thing again and again making Skelly frustrated till he realizes he just evaluating his living conditions to report back home. Yonhua and Fernando, the sensible dog lady, are sitting in a cafe while Yonhua is really ecstatic since she actually coincidentally found Reverend Adam coming. And sitting outside the cafe on a bench to read a book so obviously it won't be stalking this time and she can stare. But as she looks outside, Lily comes floating and drunk near the bench surprising Adam who hasn't seen her in a while, but instead of replying she just drops herself on the bench while placing her head on his shoulder. 
For very obvious reasons, the cup in Yonhua's hand breaks spilling hot tea all over her hand but Fernando waves the waiter off knowing Yonhua is used to the physical and emotional pain she's currently going through. Willie starts drooling and snoring in a moment making Adam laugh at the drunkard. He talks to the passed out Willie on how she needs to cut off on the drink and then leans to whisper something in her ear which makes Yonhua shed tears of heartbreak seeing them up close and him whispering stuff that must be romantic in her ear with a fond smile over his face. What Yonhua doesn't know is that Adam has been whispering religious verses in Willie's ear about how alcohol is not a good drink and it should be avoided. Fernando tries to make Yonhua believe that maybe it's not what it looks like but even Fernando has a hard time believing so. Yonhua is devastated since there was a doubt back when she saw the shadows from afar but it's not doubtful by the sight in front of them at the moment. She thinks he's confessing his love to Lily again and again as it seems like he's repeating something when in reality he's repeating one shouldn't drink in her ear again and again till she wakes up. Skelly's friend apologizes for prying into his life and offers to wash his dirty laundry as an apology but Skelly chews to wave it off. He insists and asks Skelly to not open the door while he's doing so to avoid the foul smell from spreading through the entire apartment. Skelly waves him off. Edward's son actually didn't want him to open the door because he opened a high mono portal that brought out some mouse servants to do the chores for Skelly secretly and then disappear after it. He then asks the servants to quietly wash the clothes that are making their noses hurt and then he can open the portal for them to disappear again. Skelly on the other hand is about to make some tea but knows that he's using low-quality tea bags and he's just gonna get judged again for that since his friend has never lived like or with commoners before. Skelly decides to treat this high-quality guest with some good drink. Skelly calls out to him to tell him he is short of tea so will be going out to bring some to which the friend is about to decline but the noisy servants make him make Skelly leave. As Skelly leaves, the two servants get an earful by their master so they run off to clean the rest of the apartment. The friend sees a hair strand on ground realizing it must belong to the cat since it reeks of milk. He then rummages through Skelly's stuff to find a book about cats and treating them where he sees the picture of a cute white cat making him believe it's what his cat must look like. The dragon friend then uses his brain to think that this might not be the picture of the cat he owns since the hair he found was black in color. He decides to look around a bit more and if he finds a white hair then he'll conclude that it's the picture of his cat but before he can do that, the servants have cleaned the room spotless. He's surprised at how fast they were but the two just mentioned that it was because the apartment is too small. They then ask for a praise by their master and squeak upon getting that. He laughs and tells them to squeak less as they sure love being praised but they have stopped squeaking and it's actually the sound of the tapes getting loose from the door. This makes him realize that Skelly is back so not having time to open portal, he pushes the two servants into the drawer nearby. Skelly is surprised at how spotless the place is along with thinking how he needs to fix the door as soon as possible. While making tea, his friend casually inquires about the black hair showing concern that someone might have broken into his room but Skelly tells him it might belong to one of his friends. The friend assumes it belongs to Lily but he tells him that it's another friend. He then asks how Lily so Skelly tells him that she is just an average succubus but realizing the high class friend might not have seen a succubus ever he briefs how she's nice, alcoholic, and a bit hot tempered. On the other hand, Lily has woken wide awake and thrown Adam to the ground in anger surprising the poor reverend. She's furious at Adam for trying to brainwash her but Adam is confused and he tells her he was just reciting Bible when she came and sat next to him. But Lily takes no jokes as she knows he's been speaking those verses by memory and was repeating the verse about not drinking to her and now it's stuck in her head. Adam is secretly pleased with the effectiveness of his reciting, but his good mood is cut short when Lily goes wild at him for doing so and starts hitting him. After injuring the poor guy, she runs off whining about going to complain to Skelly about this. Skelly hands his friend the mug who secretly judges him for not getting tea served in proper teacups but he then shows curiosity about what Lily looks like when Skelly tells him she's a good friend even though a bit nonsensical. Skelly tries to find a picture of hers in the phone but he hasn't taken any since he last changed his phone but before the curiosity can rise, the door of the room bangs upon with a frantic Lily shouting about being brainwashed. Skelly, not at all surprised, by the chaotic visit casually shows his friend what Lily looks like. Yonhua is embarrassed on accidentally witnessing all the chaos around Adam, but their cries are cut short when they see Adam sucking blood from his lips. Coming back to senses, she cries about rejection when Fernando tells her that there's nothing embarrassing about being rejected. Yonhua listens to her and then gets up wanting to leave since she does not want to stare at Reverend Adam anymore while Fernando reluctantly leaves her tiramisu to go to another cafe with no view to the park with her teary eyes companion. 